hello and welcome back to another part of glorious today we are starting chapter three which is titled the order of things it's from the perspective of gabby emerson this is part one besides myself we had only one other morning person on the ship rayner he always seemed to be up before me and dressed, with his blanket folded neatly over the back of the couch and his pillow hidden away so anyone could sit down. He was so quiet most of the time and so polite. When he realized I was an early riser too, he had started making a second cup of coffee for me. I had held on to it, pretending to drink it, and he had caught on the second day. You don't have to drink it. What do you prefer? He had asked. I had told him I really enjoyed tea. And now he had it ready for me at the time I always got up. I looked forward to the early mornings, sitting on the couch quietly and enjoying the quiet of the ship. Rainer would talk sometimes, but more often than not, we just relaxed and woke up properly. This morning, I didn't smell the usual coffee from down the hall as my alarm went off or hear the kettle going as he prepared for me to walk in. Part of me worried. What if he had chosen to leave? We had landed yesterday so that today we could pick up fuel from a small town, and I was sure he could have found a way home. Although Slade was always kind to me, I knew he could be overly rough on Rayner. I still didn't understand him sometimes. He barely knew Rayner, and he wanted nothing to do with him. Rayner was a nice guy, and if Slade would have taken a minute to get to know him, I was sure he would have realized it. Yet, even being in the same room as our newest companion would set him off. It was even worse when Kari was in the room. Slade wasn't blind and knew the two were bonding. They may have argued more often than not about ridiculous things, but the way she looked at him, the way he looked at her, hmm... I always wished someone would look at me like that. I got to my feet, stretching as I did. The new bed was still an adjustment, and it didn't help that we had so much running around to do trying to maintain a large ship with five people. My back was stiff most of the time, but I always tried to work through it. If I was feeling it, our old man Slade was feeling it ten times worse and wasn't complaining. Even now that he wasn't paying me for the work, I still wanted to go above and beyond, although now it was less for the money and more to show him he was working with one of the best. Slade was rough around the edges, but once you got past that exterior, he was better. He wasn't quite at the point where I would have called him sweet, but he was kind-hearted and caring towards Kari and I. When it came to Blazer, he was pretty indifferent. Blazer was still coming out of his shell with us, and although I was trying to work my way in, he took a while to open up. Whenever Slade was grouchy, he darted from the room quickly and returned once he saw him leave, or heard him laugh and knew it was alright. Most of us were pretty young, but he was even younger. I had no idea what he had been through, no idea how he had ended up alone in a, an abandoned ship, but I wanted to make sure he felt welcome. He looked like he just needed some company, some time to not be alone. I had gotten dressed as I was thinking, and looking at the time, I sighed. <sighs> if he wasn't awake yet, I would just have to walk in quietly to make him a coffee. It was the least I could do after he had done the same for me so many mornings. The walk down the hall always felt loud in the mornings. Every time my feet hit the floor, it made an echoing sound. When we were in the sky, it wasn't so bad. We had the sound of the engines, at least, to drown out any sound. I reached the door and pressed my hand to it to open it. When it slid open, I looked straight ahead to the couch where I saw Rainer sleeping. This morning, though, he wasn't alone. Kari was asleep, him holding her close to his chest. I saw one of his eyes open at just a crack then close again if he, as if he hadn't seen me. The smile on his face betrayed him, though. He gently released Kari, shaking her shoulder lightly and whispering, Kari, time to wake up. We've been found out. 
You two are adorable, but you need to get up before Slade comes in here, I told him as Kari groaned. She was definitely not a morning person. That much I was sure of by how many times she had come to Slade's shop with me early and fallen asleep on his couch instead of hanging out with me. Go back to sleep, she mumbled, pulling the blankets tighter around herself. Rainer sighed, placing a hand over his forehead. Honestly, I could tell he looked about as thrilled to get up as she did today. Instead of trying to convince her, he sat himself up, moving her off of him with ease and into a sitting position. She fought it briefly, but gave up quickly as she opened her eyes and realized it was morning. I was sure that if she hadn't been so tired, she would have been able to fight back against being moved with ease. I had seen her lift the guy easily after all. He had no idea what he was getting into with our little She-Hulk. Good morning, sleepyhead, I exclaimed, then looked over at Rainer. I cleared my throat <clears throat> and turned back to stare at Kari. Um, Rainer, you might want to also get dressed before he gets up. He was wearing boxers and a shirt, but it felt inappropriate since Kari had been there. I couldn't have cared less, but if Slade had walked in, that just would have fueled his frustrations. Right. Was all Rainer responded with before he rushed to grab his clothes. They were freshly folded and set on top of the table, just as they were a few nights a week. Considering he had been with her last night, I was sure he hadn't been the one to wash them. Small things had been getting done around the ship, things that went unnoticed. Anytime there were dishes, they would be done and put away without question. Rainer's clothes would be washed, even when there was no way he could have done them. He had gotten some new ones the first time we landed, but he preferred the ones he had worn. When we got back home, I would encourage him to get things from where he had been living. That was, if he wanted to stay on board with us. He had left the room to get dressed, and Kari was staring at me sheepishly. So, I asked, crossing my arms and tapping my foot, how did you end up out here? She pulled her blanket around herself and turned to look away from me. I've been out here most nights. I just never fall asleep. Kari Ryder, that's why you've been so tired. I exclaimed, moving towards the couch and sitting with her. She bit her lip. Are you going to tell Slade? She looked really concerned about it, and I might have if I had been worried about how Rainer treated her. When I walked in, though, they had looked so peaceful and calm laying there together. I swear, we just slept, she explained. I wrapped her in a hug. It was rare for her to actually be nervous around me. Of course I'm not going to tell Slade. I'm just glad you finally look like you got some sleep. She let out the breath she had been holding, and I realized she really was nervous about it. Why have you been coming in here? She shrugged her shoulders slightly, and I let go of her, leaning back against the couch. We both couldn't sleep, so we've just been chatting every night. If it were up to me, they would be a couple. The two were gorgeous. They would have looked so good together. Yet they just couldn't agree on anything. And that was going to be an issue if they kept up whatever was going on between them. Is this going to turn into something? I wondered. She shook her head, then second-guessed herself. We have a connection, but there's something I just don't understand about him. She was vague and cryptic, starting to sound more like him and Slade each day. Slade had become far more mysterious lately. And when the topic of Kari acting strange came up, he would quickly redirect the conversation or insist strongly that she was being completely normal. In other words, he didn't want to admit that his little sister was getting feelings for the new guy. He didn't want to think about the fact that she was growing up and acting strange because she wasn't needing his protection anymore. I was sure Slade was feeling jealous that he might always not always be the main guy in her life. I could have been way off in my guess, 
but I couldn't think of another reason. What don't you understand? I wondered, and she stretched her legs out, reaching her arms up and cracking her back. She shook her head. I can't put my finger on it. I mean, I'm comfortable with him and safe, yet something feels so wrong about it, like there's this wall between us. Well, there was no wall between you last night. Just some fabric. I teased, and she rolled her eyes at me. Seriously, though, Kari, something feeling right but so wrong? A barrier between you? I tried to put emphasis on the words to make her see where I was going. It sounded so much like her dream, except for the weird field and golden eye thing. She turned to me, looking confused. Kari! I exclaimed, putting my hand on her shoulder. Your dream! It sounds like how you feel in your dream! She frowned, looking down at her hands, which were now sitting on her legs. No, it's nothing like that. She stood then, holding her blanket in her arms. I should go get ready for the day. You know how Slade would react if he found me in here. I did know how he would react, and it was unfortunate. I'll worry about Slade, I promised her with a gentle smile. If you sleep better with him, you do what you need to. Leave Slade to me. She looked grateful. It has nothing to do with him. I was just tired enough to fall asleep. I had a feeling she didn't even realize it. Even I could see that she had felt safe there last night. He had been holding her so tightly. It was impossible that someone could see the two and not know they would make a good pair. He was definitely a nicer guy than the one or two she had seen in the past. Back when we first met, she had mentioned small things about an ex-boyfriend she had. She knew he had been her first love, her first everything, really. She couldn't seem to remember where she met the guy or where he was now. She didn't even remember his name or what he looked like. Just that he was a real part of her past. Since she had the accident, she didn't remember much of anything, really. It's sad, forgetting your first love like that. All right, if that's what you believe, I told her as she walked to the door. But you didn't see him smiling when I walked in the room and saw the two of you together. She waved at me as she walked away, but I had a feeling she was grinning. As they wandered off to get ready for their days, I went to the kitchen. I turned on the coffee pot as well as the kettle. I always set the cof- up the coffee the night before these days to make it easier on Rainer when he got up. The kettle, though, that was for Slade. Although I admired him, there were some things about the man that I just didn't get. Like the fact that he enjoyed mixing black tea with coffee. (laughs) It was the most bitter, disgusting drink anyone could have enjoyed. Kari had told me early in my days working with him that it kind of represented his personality. But I had yet to properly see that side of him. Except for when he was near Rainer. When it was ready, I grabbed myself a cup of tea and left the common area on the way towards Slade's room. He was always a bit less grouchy when he had coffee in the morning, and he never minded the company. I noticed Rainer walking back towards his room and smiled at him. He still looked slightly awkward about the fact I had walked in on them sleeping together, but he smiled back and continued on his way. Slade's room was the furthest from the common area, the closest room to where the engine was. He liked to be close just in case something were to happen, but it was still a bit of a walk to get there. (laughs) It wasn't like the engine was right next to where we slept. We would have gotten no sleep if it were. She was an older ship, which meant she wasn't as quiet as some of the newer models. She was ours, though, and she did her job well. The Vital. We always got a kick out of calling her the vital, which was mostly because it bugged Slade so much. I thought I was the only one who could get away with it without him being too upset. I knocked on the door to his room, which was situated next to Kari, across from my room. 
He was determined to be close to us, even and even though there were other rooms, he made sure Rainer didn't feel welcome enough to sleep in them. It frustrated me sometimes, because he was nice and deserved a comfort, comfortable place to rest his head. Slade always scoffed. The rooms were too close to his sister, and he didn't like how Rainer looked at her. He also didn't like how his sister looked at Rainer, but that was a whole other story. She could do what she wanted, as long as he didn't try anything. I heard the sound of his voice. Come in. It was short, rough, and tired. I opened the door and peeked my head in, smiling at him. I brought you coffee. I spoke happily, walking forward and holding it out to him. His room was plain, a bed, a couch, and a closet that held his clothes. Like all of ours, his bed was attached to the ground. It wasn't the most comfortable setup, but it kept them from moving around and causing damage. Like I had, he had brought his own pillow and blankets. We had managed to replace the mattresses and get them strapped down before leaving, thanks to Blazer. I wasn't sure how he had managed to get them so last minute, but he told me he had connections. I just hoped it wasn't the kind of connections we now owed a favor to. He sat up in his bed and looked up at me. What would we even do without you? He asked, and I knew he was just sweet talking because of of the coffee in my hand. I handed it to him, and he took it, closing his eyes and taking a deep sip. (laughs) His hair was a mess, enough so that it almost looked funny. He had clearly tried tying it up before he went to bed, but so much of it had fallen out of its tie during the night. You'd have to wake up and make your own coffee, and the best company here would be your sister, I said happily as I walked towards the door. You don't feel like staying today? He asked, and I turned around to look at him. He patted the bed gently, telling me to sit down if I wanted to. We should talk about the plan since we need supplies. I cleared my throat as I watched him, nodding and moving back to sit at the edge of his bed, far enough away that I wasn't in his personal space. But there was only so far away you could sit. What do we need exactly? He took another sip of coffee, thoughtful for a moment. For one, we need to get fuel. We can't exactly land at a station, though, so we'll have to transport it back to the VTOL in the jeep. I thought about what else we needed. Besides fuel, we could use some spare groceries. Feeding five people wasn't cheap, and we went through food quickly. The person who went through the most food was Blazer. He must have been going through a growth spurt, which made sense considering his age. We need some groceries too. We're running short on some essentials, I told him, and he looked thoughtful. We might need a couple of small parts for the engine. Nothing crazy, I just noticed... Yeah, I know what you mean, he told me. Between the two of us, we had been over the engine at least once a day to make sure everything was good. We'll pick them up. No problem. I made a mental checklist. Fuel, groceries, and engine parts. We should pick up the fuel. I'll send Blazer for parts. Slade looked nervous at that idea. I'll write a list. He has connections. I'm sure he'll get us a good deal. I guess that leaves Kari and Rainer. He mumbled. I'll send you with Rainer to grab groceries, and I'll take Kari to grab the fuel. I wouldn't deny that I felt a bit sad at the idea. I had been looking forward to picking it up with him. Yet, it was a good idea. Kari was tough, and if anything needed to be carried, she was going to be more useful than I was. Sure, I would have been able to manage, but she would do so with ease. I I nodded slightly. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe you should just make sure we're near a station. The less travel we do, the better. He thought about it. If anyone is looking for her, that's not a good idea. If they were looking for her, we would have found out by now. Plus, the jeep isn't going to carry enough fuel to fill her up. You'd have to make too many trips. The least time we're out there, the safer we are. I wanted to land her in the middle of a town about as much as he did, but there were spots made for that. If they found us, we could be fueled up and gone by the time they got there if anyone was even searching for the ship. 
He finished the rest of his coffee in one gulp and turned his head to look at me. You're right, but we still need to be cautious. The fact of the matter is that we don't know if they're watching for us. I got to my feet, smiling and holding out my hand to take his empty mug. Well, we'll be careful. Now go get dressed. We'll have a meeting and figure out the plan. I sighed as I left. He didn't want Kari going with Rainer. He was treating it as if it were to make everything easier, but even in the understanding of the ship being too being close to where we were to fuel up, he hadn't suggested something else. As much as I wanted to support him, this was Kari. If anything, him trying to pull her away from Rainer was going to make her want to get closer. If he was afraid of her getting hurt, it was just something he needed to let her learn on his own. End of part one. That line makes no sense. Oh yeah, it does. They landed the night before. We had landed for fuel yesterday in a small town. I'm just going to like change that up on the spot. What do you want to say? Just clarifying that like we had landed in near a small town yesterday so that we could pick up fuel today. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and knew it ever- Oh, well, and oh my god, I can't talk today. <laughs> Can you turn off the space heater? Oh, I forgot. I don't think it's like impacting too much. So. What? So, um, for the first part of that, we forgot to turn off the space heater under the table. <laughs> so it was. Uh, <laughs> A little bit of extra background noise. Yeah, it was just, you know, the working of the ship. Yeah, you know, it's sound effects. Yeah, total sound effects. <laughs> right. So we're going to continue now. <laughs> yep, moving on. Where the hell was I? Like I had, like I... Ah! Can I re-say that? Yeah. <clears throat> Do you want me to just start that paragraph? Yeah. Okay. 